Greetings to my brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray you are all well. Thank you for coming along to this talky video on Tuesday, February 2nd, 2021. It's amazing how we've actually got to February 2021. But um, all I can say about this video is it's, it's titled, it's coming in like a freight train, a runaway freight train. What do I mean by it's coming in? Well, everything that Jesus said. Jesus said in his words, there will be a time where people will understand. And a time when people will not understand. People who are drunk in the night, who party in the night, who still cling on to life, and the, the wiles of life and being struck down with fatigue and weariness, which we all are, really, but those who really take it to heart and those who let it get the better of them, those who don't have Christ Jesus, will not see this freight train coming and hitting them, which is what Jesus meant when he said it will come upon them like a snare mainly in Matthew 24, 25, speaking of the tribulation period and those in the tribulation period, the 70th week of Daniel. So we see the forerunnings of what's going on, what's coming. And let's just say we can hear the rumblings on the track coming. Now, what I mean by the rumblings of the track is we are witnessing it all building up when this train will be coming and hitting. Christ put it another way. He put it like birth pains. Like birth pains get more intense. And Jesus also said, when you see these things begin to happen, uh, the rumblings of the track, I shall say. Birth pains, is how Jesus put it. Look up. Take heed. For your redemption draws near. For I am near. And it, it's all coming. It's all happening. The book of Revelation will be swiftly coming to pass. And those who are not paying attention will just be hit by this runaway freight train. The news has been coming in so thick and fast that it's been hard for me to keep up with and other watchmen and women find it hard to keep up with also. It's something that we didn't realise was going to happen so intense and so quickly, but here we are. And Jesus said, as what we see now, I mean, Jesus mainly spoke at the opening of Matthew 24 to the Jews on the Mount of Olives, he did say the words, take heed that no man deceives you. Speaking then, he followed with, for many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. So they are the beginnings of the tribulation period. But we are seeing deception now everywhere, everywhere. We see it. I can't go into details in this video in case uh, the algorithms on this website will pick it up and say I'm some kind of conspiracy nut or something. But the thing is, there are no conspiracy theories. It's all fact. The thing is, the people who say the facts are conspiracy theories are quite comfortable with the facts and know where the facts are going to run. They, they know that that is the freight train that's going to hit. The facts are coming, they're happening, they're up and coming, they're ready to develop into our world, into our, into our homes, into our lives, and to them who make the rules, it's a good thing. But it's actually bad, which is why it does say in Isaiah 
5.20. Woe unto those who call good evil and evil good. And that is exactly where we're going. If you think everything is evil, then that's your problem. We we've got a remit to, to me. We've we've got we've got a destination to reach. You're holding up the train with your lies. This is a good thing that's coming. You're painting it as a bad thing. Well, we go by the word of God. Well, we don't. We go by ourselves and what we can do if we put our minds together. That, that's what this is all about. If you can put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything. That's what Doc Brown said in the film Back to the Future. Worry, if you can put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything. Or however he says it. And that that's true. All in the movies are, are a setup. It's all a brainwashing tactic for us to say, yeah, yeah, we, we we should we should make a stand for humanity. Yeah, yeah, come together, all of us, one mind together, and we can defeat the evil. The thing is, the evil is the one that's telling us we can defeat evil. And who is the evil? Well, to the enemy, the evil in the world, that their enemy is the one who's coming back in power and great glory on the clouds with us, the church, when we finally get up to heaven, which to us feels like any moment. To God, it could be far from now. I don't know, but to us... It is imminent because, because the word says it's imminent also. And I won't go into the rapture too much, but we have a promise from the Lord that we will be kept from the hour, the very time of this that is coming upon the earth. We will be, we will be snatched away from the presence of this freight train coming towards us at great speed just before it hits us. I mean, what does a mother do if her child runs into the into the road? Regardless if there's any cars coming or not. Even if it's, say, 6 a.m. on a Sunday morning, when you're probably going to get the least amount of cars on the road, she's going to run into that road and snatch her child. You can, you can bet on that. But then again, I have seen some parents who just are on their phones with their heads down staring at a screen and not even notice what their children are doing which is a great tool of satan they, you know, let people kill themselves through ignorance and not seeing what's around them just walk into a road walk off a cliff or whatever but that's going off on a tangent but jesus will come for us the church before this hits and boy, do we hear the tracks rumbling. We're seeing a lot of things happening that Jesus said would happen that would line up with the days of Lot, especially. I do believe America has been handed over to a debased mindset, which God said he would do that. If people turn their back on him to the point where he is throwing everything at them, saying, come to me, turn to me. I am doing this to you to make you look up at people. They, oh, no, 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 I don't believe that. Let, let's see what this man has to say. This guy says uh, climate change is coming and it's here already and we need to do this. We need to hunker down and we need to get rid of more people because they're the problem. They're their carbon footprint or whatever that rubbish means and i've got to be careful of algorithms haven't i oh, dear me anyway no that's the catch folks that's the catch we know what the word says the evil knows what the word says but they don't want that to be blurted out to the general populace of the planet earth because they want the evil want all the people to be kettled in, boxed in, lulled into a false sense of security, stroking their hair, 
their heads and wooing them to, to their deaths, to their sleep, where Satan will have company in the lake of fire. That's his raison d'etre, shall we say. Uh, that's his ultimate goal to get everybody with him in eternal pain and damnation. Jesus will become a swear word if he, his name isn't a swear word already. Anything good and just and moral will be shunned and seen as just ugh, despicable. Woe unto those who call the good evil and evil good. They, they, they will be saying that that you know, getting rid of children is fine. We need to get more people off this planet because they're, they're ruining the planet. Too many of us. Okay, well, if that's your mindset, then God will lead you down that path to a debased way of thinking. And will leave you to it, and you will just dwell in your own iniquities until Jesus comes and judges you in the sheep and goats judgment. Which is why I talk about the fullness of the Gentiles. The fullness of the Gentiles, I believe, is when the last Gentile will be saved before the tribulation period even begins. When God knows. The, the people who have fallen for this lie and the people who haven't, or the people who still have a heart for God and God can bring them to him. That's what I believe. There's a cut-off point between those who, will, who are, their hearts are veering to the lie and they're stepping in front, uh, they're walking to the train track. They're, they're just, just curious about what, what this sound is, this rumbling sound of the train track. And the others are thinking, yeah, you know, guys, this doesn't sound good. This doesn't sound right. You know, I think we need a second opinion. And people will say, oh, my God, and things like that. And, and it's inherently built within us, people. We have God within us. We naturally say, oh, my God, without even thinking about it. Why? Because God is written on our hearts. He designed our hearts. He knows also who's going to come to him. This isn't predestination, Calvinism. This is what God has set a time for when that last person will not accept the lie and the way things are going, will not accept children are being butchered in the womb, will not accept the, how can I say, LGBT, LGBT agenda, the um, rainbow flag people. Um, um, the last person to abstain against that and, 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 and say, no, this isn't right, this is the wrong direction we're going in, their heart is already turning to God. They're seeing the world falling apart around them and madness ensuing, which is why God, I believe, has turned America over to a debased way of thinking and the current uh, leader in power now, I've got to be careful with my words again, is bringing out lots of um, ungodly, despicable uh, uh, legislation. And America is turning into Sodom and Gomorrah very quickly. And... Uh, God, I think, needs to do this to bring to him, with the world in general, all the protests, everything, not just America, in Yemen, uh, uh, uprisings in China, 
a massive church in China. You're talking hundreds of millions. People say when the rapture happens, about 30 to 100 million will go up, or way more than that. I believe way more than that. China alone has a massive underground church, massive. The, what, how their church is, is we can't, we can't even, I, I feel ashamed sometimes of, of my love of the Lord compared to individuals who are Christians in China. They adore the Lord. Well, I do too, but yeah, I, 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 in my flesh, I get envious. I, I am a sinner. I do feel envy and to those who I feel put a lot of Christians in the Western world to shame. Why? Because we haven't been squeezed. Like in Smyrna is where we get the word myrrh from. When myrrh is the seed of myrrh, when it's squashed and squeezed, it brings out its fragrance. This is what's happening in places like uh, um, the Congo in Africa, you get um, in China, where I've mentioned Iraq and Muslim countries, uh, countries of great um, communist agenda, like China. Um, I've got to be careful of the algorithms. I've got to remember that. Video could be deleted. But anyway, anyway, the, the church gets squeezed. Smyrna, the church of Smyrna, got squeezed. And they brought out a great fragrance. They became a great church because they were persecuted, just like the Church of Philadelphia also. Now, well, I, I look at the churches in general, and we've had it easy in the Western world for quite some time. Now we're about to be squeezed. I see that. I see that. And... We need to be very strong now. It's going to be tough for America. And when, yeah, you know, I've noticed we're here in the UK, America and the UK pretty much are simultaneous with things. People always say here in the UK, when America sneezes, England catches a cold or vice versa, when America has a cold, England sneezes. Same thing. So when, when America has a few blips, in, especially in the, the economy, Britain, England is the first place to, to feel it, because we're very close to America. Like the young lions and the old lions, we are very much... Um, um, connected to America and soon as the church in America will get persecuted you can bet your last penny that England will feel it at the same time or if not swiftly after. Now do we fear? Well no because the Lord did not give us a spirit of fear Yes, this freight train's coming. Yes, we know. We know what the word says. We read the word. We study the word. We trust the word. The word is Jesus. He is the word, the very word. And when he comes back, his very word will put everything right. Because he's the Lord. He created everything. In the beginning, there was the word. The word was God. And... It still is. God's not on the throne panicking. Oh man, what's going on? No, no. Oh, everything's going wrong. How? Like J.D. Farag says, how disconcerting would that be if God was like that, just to and fro pacing about, wearing out the carpet? Well, I'm not saying God has a carpet. God walks on fine jewels and gold, the colours of the rainbow, which isn't the LB, the agenda, it's not that at all, it's the love, the covenant, 
the Lord has with the world. And he reminds us of that daily. Minute to minute, second to second basis. God sees what's unfolding in the world. Let's just imagine that he sees it on big wide screen TVs of, of our kind of understanding. He sees the beginning from the end, the end from the beginning. For he is the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the one who is, the one who was, the one who is to come, the Almighty. Or should I say the one who was, the one who is, the one who is to come, the Almighty. I always get that messed up on video. I never I always say it right in prayer, but not on video. I like to be exact, guys. I, I like to get the word right. I may be wrong on things. I always go to the Lord and I, I say to the Lord, Lord, can you please help me if I'm wrong with my doctrine, with my eschatology, exegesis, eisegesis, all of it, the whole shebang, the hermeneutics, you know, the heptatic structure, the dispensations, help me to understand all this and get it spot on right. I look at what pastors say, some are wrong, some have a great lot of truth in there. They study the structure of the words and where it appears in the Bible. We shouldn't really go to a place in the Bible and say, well, it said it here, so it must mean that later on. No, we should study around it and look at the verbs and the tenses, the meanings behind why the apostles and the prophets said what they said at that time and who that word is aimed at. That's what we must be dividing. There are a lot of false teachers out there, a lot of people who are still date setting. And like I said, I believe the fullness of the Gentiles is that last person who has a heart for God in these last days, these last hours before the 70th week begins. And when that person, God thinks that last person can be saved just before the shutters come down and the shop closes, that's when he comes for his church. He, he'll come for the church when that last person, when there's no time left to be had, well, I mean, God's not going to leave anyone behind. Just think if, and I'm going to be with my me personally here, that back in 2019 when I was saved, just think if the last Gentile was saved way back before the like 2015 time when the rapture happened. God was patient, long-suffering enough to see the piling amount of children murdered in the womb and still allow more to die in order to save more people. As soon as a baby dies, it, that baby goes to, to heaven. Praise the Lord. They just change location. So that's the comfort we can take when looking at... Um, yeah, I can't say that. abortion, abortion. You yeah, know, this is ridiculous. You can't say anything anymore. And it, this, this is the way the world's going. And the Lord said these days would come. He really did. And we must recognize that. And we, we must adapt if we are still to preach the word. And that's what we're here to do, fulfill the Great Commission and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ where we can, when we can. So this last Gentile, whoever he or she is, will be saved just in the last moments. And th this is why the, the rapture's always been imminent. There's always been people being persecuted in the church. There's always been upheaval in the world. There's always been evil dictators in the world. But we see things converging, what Jesus said to look out for. When you see these things begin to happen, look up for your redemption draws near. Quantum computers, 
Daniel spoke about them in, in the book of Daniel. The knowledge will increase. People will go to and fro. So like, everything will be frantic. Everything will be busy. All these lockdowns because of um, the pestilence. Jesus said there will be famines and pestilences. And the people are already talking about global famine now. And there's a global pestilence now. They're talking about global leadership, a global ruler coming. And we know that to be the Antichrist. The technology for the mark of the beast is, is here. And I actually will go out on a limb. And I will say right here and right now that I believe there are some people in the world who have that already. Who have that mark. But they need to test it. There will be people in this world. There are already people with microchips in their hands. But I'm not saying the RFID chip is the mark. But they're the guinea pigs for it. It could be the mark. I don't know. You, you've seen the news clips, the news reels on people having these things put into their body for a laugh. Ha ha ha, this, this looks fun. I wonder what it can do. I wonder if I could pay for things without having to reach into my pocket to bring out a wallet. Oh, the inconvenience of it. Pulling my wallet out of my pocket. Oh, it's so hard. The convenience of having a wallet in your body, virtual wallet. We already have this with Apple Pay. I suppose they have Android Pay as well. I hate to say I'm an Apple person. I'm a banana person as well. Ah! Yeah, anyway, back to the seriousness. But I do believe there's an individual or many individuals in this world now who have the... The final, uh, um, shall we say, designs of the mark on them. In them, they are they are guinea pigs for this coming in, and, and they have to test it. Of course, they do. They have to test it with the satellites to see if they can pick up these people, track these people. And when they've got it spot on, dead on right, they'll just roll it out to the masses. Everything's pre-planned, folks. Everything's set up already. The movies tell us that they're planning all this. FEMA camps. They've been set up for, I think, for about the last decade. I mean, the films, the Star Wars films, I always mention the Star Wars films. It's... When you look at those films, they are absolute genius, maybe because I do believe the creator of these movies, George Lucas, was a massive insider. He must have known the satanic agenda to come out with these movies, the dystopia of it all. When he came out with the term stormtroopers, they were in Nazi Germany. He took... The complete works of George Orwell and, um, and Aldous Huxley and the Bible. I do believe he, he studied the Bible. I mean, the Battle of Endor. Come on. Endor is in the Bible. <laughs> the crying out loud. And, and all, all of these, all these creatures, it's, it's all to do with an agenda, a, a it's, it's all about a dark force creeping in through politics and how, how there's a deception in politics, sort of like a sleeper cell in, in the background, ready to rise up. I think we all probably know who he is, but we, we won't ever know who it is because we, well, we, we will in time, but we'll be in heaven enjoying our Lord's presence. Amen to that. And I do believe that this individual, as like a lot of pastors say, is in the world now. He's just not ready to come to the surface and be known to everybody 
as this world leader who will save the day and that's what he will be he will be there to show the world that um, we need to come together and everybody will love that it does sound quite nice actually it does we must all come together in peace and unity but the clincher of it is when he says well he, he will he will pretty much single out a whole bunch of people come together on my terms that means anyone who has a godly moral backbone judgment or whatever they're dead we, we can't have that how much of a far cry is that from Jesus Christ yeah. Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28 come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest well that's not what the Antichrist would say he'll say do what I say take my mark accept the horrors in this world and we can sort it out if we all come together but you just did got to do what I say there'll be no rest there it'll be turned into a complete Marxist dystopia socialism on a global scale socialism has tried to rear its ugly head through Stalin and um, Hitler many dictators have come and gone but nobody has managed to globally achieve that but now all the countries the ten nations are coming together they're meeting in Switzerland in Davos to discuss this new world order and the algorithms can hit me with that but it is true that's what they're saying the new world order that's what they're calling it a great reset that's another um, rhetoric that covers the fact that they want a new world order the new world order will be the antichrist beast system kingdom that will trample down all over the earth that will be the iron mixed with miry clay the Roman Empire mixing in with the, the Gentiles that the, the, just it, they will it will not mix they, they'll they'll try to it's all about DNA folks so I believe it's it's all about them trying to mingle the seed of of Satan with the human genome and all you have to do is listen to what Elon Musk says on a daily basis and you know what kind of time we're in um, but it, it's truly frightening for those who are switched on who don't have Jesus and a lot of people just hide under the rug under a rock and say oh I don't care I'm just gonna live my life and I know people like that I know individuals who just party and live their life how they want to live it they don't really care about anybody else if it affects them I don't care I'm living my life the way I want to live it what a rude awakening they're gonna get yeah it will be very much a free-for-all in the Antichrist kingdom sin will be not just rampant it will be law I'm, I'm guessing and I hate to say it but I do believe people will be raped and murdered in the streets and no one, no one will do a damn thing about it it will be you know brigandage which is Russian you know, so for the, the, the time of, the, of, of Soviet Russia where lots of rapes and um, murders and um, pillaging went on brigandage it's it was an awful time in Soviet Russia and that that time is coming again there's great Marxism there's the it, it'll be like Stalin all over the world you you will own nothing and be happy and that's kind of how it is now isn't it if you think about it people living with their flexible friend their credit card you know and 
everything on credit, you don't own it. You're still borrowing off Peter to pay Paul, as my dad used to say. That There's no biblical reference there, by the way. It's just what my dad used to say. You're borrowing off Peter to pay Paul. And you're never going to pay it off. Or in here in the UK, it's you. if you want something, you put it on the never-never. As in, you're never, never going to pay for it. You're never, never going to own it. Well, you own it, but you don't own it. You have it, rather, but you don't own it. That's like why a lot of people are being pushed out of their homes. Uh, I mean, this is what happened in the in the time of um, Hoover. The, the Great Depression in America, everything just stopped being yours. It suddenly got taken away from you. The government has a way of just taking it away from you, so you own nothing and you're happy. I think the Great Depression in America was Satan's attack on America to bring it down, and this is the second wave coming that will actually be the right time for it to happen. God allowed the Great Depression to subside, and everybody came back and from that maybe some didn't but god made it so that america could have another second chance i believe god is throwing america to the wall now and saying right that's it you have not repented of your evil deeds i am going to hand you over to the evil you've been peddling for all these decades and now your house will be divided, and Jesus said, a house divided cannot stand. In this case, a nation, country divided, will not stand. America's being split right down the middle. And it's sad what's happened to a country that was forged from Christian founding fathers. But there's always been an inherent swamp there always has been an underlying evil. When there's liberty and justice, there is always somebody trying to mix it up. Someone in the background trying to rise up. And we've seen that, haven't we? Through the decades. The um, wickedness in the world. I won't go into details, but the 13 families of the... Um, the evil satanic rule of this world, the rulership that's turning everything into a dystopian nightmare that benefits them and kills the poor. And, and that's what's been rising in the background, underground. It's like the, the Roman Empire that never died. It's the smouldering empire that... It's the, Rome was collapsed to the ground, but there, the underlying, under the rubble, there was always this swamp, this, this underground thinking. Just like the underground church, there's always good under the, the evil. Good will always prevail. However, however, this, this is what we see now. The evil is starting to take over. And God has the final say, he has the final word. He says when this time will be, when this time will happen. And I believe this time is now. We hear the train tracks rumbling. We know the freight train is coming. We know it's going to hit. But before this freight train comes and hits, God will pull his righteous out before this freight train hits. Does that mean... Many Christians will escape persecution. No, not at all. Some people, Christians, believers in Christ Jesus, will have soft persecution. Some will have medium persecution. And some who we must pray for, who are kneeling before their Lord, while someone behind them with a great sword is about to take their head off, we should pray for those 
who are being persecuted for the, the namesake of Christ Jesus. And we know that's um, the evil religion in this world that I can't go into due to algorithms once again. Um, uh, I-S-L-A-M uh, uh, that I believe was created by the Roman Catholic Church in around 600 AD and it's the false religion it's the harlot that created this false religion like I say Jesus said once again at the beginning of Matthew 24 take heed that no man deceives you and that's what we should be looking at and we should be looking at our Lord Jesus Christ every single day we should be in prayer to him every single day I know I am at least once a day sometimes at least twice a day or three times a day I'm always in prayer as much as I can be each and every day praying for my brothers and sisters in the body of Christ who are going through pain and suffering who have a lot of woes and worries I do I do also I don't know what's going to happen I mean the evil in this world has this cunning way of bringing out rules here in the UK we call it legislation um, but they bring out legislation and rules that are so cleverly designed that it catches certain people out which is why the benefit and you know welfare system in the UK and America such like are designed in such a way that the poor are just kept below the water they, they come up for air but they're, they're, they're the government with their big hand pushes their head down so they can't come up for air and breathe. They're always under the waterline. They can never break free from that because the government has their elites and it's a, it's a class-based system. And soon that class will be completely divided from the elites to the poor and it will be a global poor. This will be when the New World Order completely takes hold of the world and the Antichrist beast system is fully um, engaged and that is the time when Jesus comes back with the church and all the armies of heaven which is the church and the, and the mighty angels come back to claim the earth which the Lord owns God's El Shaddai, Elohim, El Shaddai, the Lord Almighty, Hebrew for God Almighty, his name is written on Jerusalem. And if you look carefully at the structure of our hearts, the Shin, H, uh, S H I N, it looks like a W, w sign, W, a W with uh, three crowns on top of the W. And um, that is also how the ventricles and the, um, the main arteries in the heart are actually in that shape of a W, a, 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 the shin, which is, it, it means El, El Shaddai. And it's, that's, go, go look it up. It's, it's the three rivers of Jerusalem or a better way of saying it, valleys um, is, is the best way to describe it. So you've got the Valley of Hinman um, and the, the Tyropian Ty, Ty Ty uh, Valley and uh, the Valley of Jehoshaphat, which makes up um, around Zion, Acre, Bethsaida and uh, the, uh, the uh, Mount Moriah. And you know, that makes up. Um, Israel, Jerusalem, and it's 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 beautiful um, how it's in the shape of the shin, as if God's name is written right upon it, and it's a beautiful sight to behold. Also, if you, if you could get an aerial view of it, it, um, it and fly over it in a helicopter or something, how beautiful that that must look, and it, it's and 
goosebumps all over your body to know that you know God is real. I mean, you don't need to know that God is real. By um, to, well, you do, but by word of mouth, you, you you just know it by the fact that there are Jews in the world. There is a land of Israel. That proves God is real. No, no matter what, hands down, God wins because that is mentioned in the Bible. And it's if you if you want to know if there's a God, you just look at Israel. You look at the Jew. The Jews come from from the Bible, from from God. God's name is written on Jerusalem itself, and which is why. The dividing of Israel, the two-state solution, which is coming, which is part of the big freight train that's going to hit once that nation, of Israel, Jerusalem, is, is divided, the Holy Land. That's it. The, 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 the hammer drops on the earth and the seven-year tribulation begins once Antichrist makes that seven-year declaration of peace by dividing Israel. So um, we need to keep looking up, keep encouraging one another, loving one another, forgiving one another, because Jesus forgave us and loves us also. We should take his word literally and love the fact that he's coming back and love him for the reason that he sacrificed himself for all of our sins and always we must preach the gospel of Jesus Christ as and where we can and that can be found here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 to 4 Moreover, brethren, I'm reading from the King James, by the way. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received, and in which you stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast that word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again. The third day, according to the scriptures. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. There was a gospel for the kingdom which concerned Israel. Israel turned it down and Jesus turned to the Gentiles around uh, John 14. And that was Jesus saying, I'm putting the kingdom on postponement for the Jews. Um, goodbye for now. And said hello to the church in John, around John 14. And said on, you know, Jesus said, on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Jesus was going to create his church to bring about the end times and bring people into his kingdom who truly wanted to be with him. And that did concern the Jews also, but they had to wait. Jesus postponed the kingdom because they turned him down. The Jews, unfortunately, were looking for that political leader. And unfortunately, a lot of Jews now are looking for that political leader, which is why Israel has to go through the time of trouble in the 70th week that's been decreed for Israel to, like I said earlier, be, be squeezed in order to bring out their um, their love for the Lord, their passion for the Lord. And this is very familiar and very useful also. Great little tract to show, um, well, it's not a Bible tract, but it, it, it helps those who don't understand how to be saved. It's the ABC of salvation, admit you are a sinner, Believe in your heart that Jesus died, and it said cried again. I, 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 because of the name Christ, it goes with, um, makes 
pl place in my head with the D for died, and I say cried. So let's start again. Admit you are a sinner. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for all sins. And call on the name of the Lord. So you call on his name, Jesus Christ, my Lord and Saviour. I admit I am a sinner and I've gone against you. I believe you died on the cross for all the sins of mankind. And you can add whatever you want after that. But once you believe in your heart on the innocent man, just like the thief on the cross next to Jesus on the Mount of Olives when he was crucified, you believe in the innocent man and you believe he came to pay that price. That's why the thief was going to paradise with Christ when he died after Jesus on the cross, when, when he was, the thief was tortured an extra amount of time, but Jesus said, I give up my spirit of myself, no man take it from me. And Jesus gave up the ghost, the spirit, as it says in scripture, and the, the uh, um, centurion got angry and pierced Jesus in the side. Blood came out and that was the testament, the baptism for the world being completed. But Jesus said before he gave up his spirit to the Father, he says, it is finished, tetelestai, which is what they, the Greeks used to stamp on invoices to say paid in full. And, and Jesus did just that. So anybody who says you need to work for your salvation and you're not saved, you have to keep maintaining it, that is wrong. Jesus Christ's blood bought you. That is payment. Once you believe in him in your heart, that he died on the cross for all the sins of mankind, even your own sins, yes, you are still a sinner, but you will not be punished for it in hell. You, you can still sin in this world. Not that I, I would advocate that. As a minister of Jesus Christ, I would not advocate that you sin. But I do. We all do. But it does not condemn us to death. Jesus will not condemn us from heaven. Once you accept and take to heart that he died on the cross for you and all the sins of mankind. He was the sacrificial lamb. And you understand the gospel. You accept it. You admit you're a sinner before the Lord that paid this debt on your behalf. You are then free to go. You are not damned to hell. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for all your kind words, comments. They mean a lot. Um, I've not been feeling very well lately. Um, been feeling weary, very tired. I wanted to throw out this video because when I feel weary and tired, I know that you all feel weary and tired also. I don't like to be selfish and think it's all about me. So I wanted to do this video to let you all know that I feel the same way you do. I am a minister of Jesus Christ, as we all are. We are all ordained ministers. The, the Holy Spirit ordains us. We don't need to go to a college. Well, it, it helps, but in the world, but spiritually, we are ordained by the Holy Spirit, Christ Jesus, to preach the word before this hammer comes down, before the freight train hits the world and we bring people to the Lord, which is why we have to go out there to bring in that fullness of the Gentiles have come in. That's when the rapture will happen. We make that happen by bringing people to the Lord, by changing people's hearts from iniquity to a place of salvation in Christ Jesus so that's what we should be doing uh, but if if you don't do that it, it, it's it's not a salvation issue you're not condemned if you don't preach the gospel to people but you you will probably lose rewards in heaven that's that's the thing you, you've got to work out your salvation you've got to use your salvation 
and and work it to the to the to the um, the better of others and to gain a reward in heaven. A lot of people say, you know, you, you, that's a works-based thing. Is that's not what it means? It means you work out your salvation. You, the, the Holy Spirit within you, you, you use it to the what what it's there for, what He is indwelt in you to do to preach the gospel, to help others, to fellowship with other Christians, and love one another and forgive one another. Help those who are less fortunate than yourself. Always be true to the word. Always study the word. Always be thankful to the Lord for every day, even though you're happy. If you're having a bad day or a good day or an in-between day, whatever your day is, and no matter how difficult it is to go to the Lord and ask for thanks because you're having such a bad day, the Lord's probably doing that. So you can get on your knees and thank him for that bad day. Because he's, he's training you up. That's what this, the sanctification is all about. It's training you up for the kingdom to be a saint of Jesus Christ. You're a saint now. Once you're justified, you're justified through the blood of Christ. You are sanctified then when the Holy Spirit comes into you through testifying that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. He died on the cross for all the sins of mankind. Saying you're a sinner in need of a saviour. You believe. You trust the Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit comes into you, sanctifies you. That's present. That's presently happening now. And the last part of that trio of things that happen, that's usually called the three tenses of salvation that is when you're glorified in the catching away of the church or when you pass away you die either way you will be glorified in Christ Jesus that's why if you die in Christ you will be glorified in his glory and you go straight to heaven and sleep with the Lord until the rapture happens some will Rise first, who are asleep, who have died in Christ throughout the ages, and those who are alive, who haven't died, who are in Christ Jesus, will be subse subsequent to that. They rise second. It will all happen very quickly, so there's not a massive gap between those who have risen first and who are dead in Christ, and those who rise, who are alive and remain. So that's uh, in the book of Thessalonians and uh, also Corinthians. So thank you for watching this. Um, I hope this video finds you all well. I pray for you all, and I, I thank you all for coming along to this video. Forgive one another, love one another, stay in the word, stay in prayer. God bless you all. Bye for now.